Take a look at this PCB. I CNC milled this a few weeks ago and it's already starting to oxidize. In this video, I'll show you how I used UV curable solder mask. We'll need a few items to do this, so I put together a list in my tutorial, which you can find linked below. The first thing I needed to do was to make a solder mask template. This is basically a piece of transparent film that has artwork for the pads and or vias. I printed this on an inkjet printer, but you could easily DIY your own with a simple Sharpie. I think this works best for simple PCBs like mine, but for complex designs, you'll probably want to print your own artwork. So in the CAD software, I isolated the pads layer and exported the artwork as a PDF. Then I tweaked the pads by filling in the holes and added some artwork. I'll need some extra copies so that I can double them up. For printing, I set the printer type to glossy and use the highest quality print setting. I found this quick dry transparency film works really well with inkjet printers. One side has a coarse texture, which is the side we'll print on. The rough surface allows the ink to dry so it sticks and doesn't wipe off. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut out the artwork and made sure to leave some excess so it's easier to handle the film. I need to double up the artwork because the ink just isn't dark enough to fully block out the UV light. To stick them together, I added some drops of super glue along the edges. You want to make sure that this doesn't get on any of the ink, so make sure there's plenty of space. Perfect alignment is very important, so you may want to tack the artwork down so it stays in place. Blank pieces of film can be used to spread the resin, so make sure you have a few. Handling the resin can be a little messy, so I made sure to wear some latex gloves. Here you can see the PCB is already starting to oxidize, so I gave it a few light passes of Scotch-Brite, which can help clean the copper. Just make sure to wash it down with some rubbing alcohol. Once cleaned, place it down on a blank piece of film. I'm using this UV curable solder mask from Mechanic, which comes in this syringe-like tube. It's easy to dispense onto the PCB, but how much to use will depend on the size of your PCB. Once on the PCB, place a blank piece of film on top of the resin and lightly press down. I found a piece of acrylic works really well for evenly spreading the resin across the PCB. To get the corners, I used a squeegee to spread the resin. You want to get rid of any air bubbles. You don't want to press too hard or you'll make the resin too thin. I found this to be a little tricky to get even, so just take your time. I added a drop of alcohol to the back of the solder mask and placed it over the PCB. Lighting up the artwork with the pads needs to be as perfect as possible and the alcohol helps keep the pieces of film together. A UV flashlight can be used to expose the resin. This one has a lot of UV LEDs. To properly expose the resin, you'll need to find the right balance of exposure time. In this first attempt, I exposed the resin for about six seconds. I then removed the solder mask and started to peel away the film. Yeah, just to find out I didn't expose it evenly enough. Some of the resin did stick to the PCB, but a big chunk of it just tore off. Onto the next PCB, I exposed this one for about 10 seconds. Following the same procedure, remove the mask and slowly peel. Yeah, yeah, this one, this one failed too. I think I may have added too much resin on this one. This is a little tricky. The size of the PCB, amount of resin, and even the distance of the light source all matters, so you'll need to do a few tests just to get it right. After a few trials and tribulations, I found 10 seconds works really well with the right amount of resin. Any longer than that, and that could result in an overexposed solder mask. Once I got decent exposure, I submerged the PCB in a tray filled with alcohol, and this helps loosen up the unexposed resin. I needed to agitate the PCB and rub off the unexposed resin using a brush and some paper towels. After a good cleaning, we can see the exposed copper pads. I did some more tests and tried out some different pigments since I had some extra samples to work with. Again, following the same procedure and about the same amount of resin and exposure time. I could never quite get perfectly even resin and I always ended up with some thin spots. I found this to be a little annoying and went through a few fails to get it this good. This process requires a balance and admittedly I had more fails than successes. I think the failed PCBs could probably be salvaged but I found it kind of laborious to clean up and honestly it doesn't cost me much to throw them out since I can just mill more in a few minutes. Once the PCBs are cleaned, I exposed it one last time to fully cure the resin. I was able to get at least one good solder mask from each sample, and for whatever reason, I found the red colored resin took the artwork the best. 
Now all that's left to do is to install the components and solder them up. And if you're wondering what this is, it's just a little button PCB I used for the Pi Girl Zero build. So how well does the solder mask actually work? Well, it's pretty good. It actually flows onto the pads much better than the bare copper, which is pretty nice. And FYI, as an alternative to UV curable resin, there's also a dry film type that might be a better option. Hey, if you guys have any tips and tricks, please let me know down in the comments. It'll help me out and other people too. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up if you found it useful.